Right, we're rolling. Here we go. And, and. Estella. It's not Estella. I'm Cruella. I'd like to start my own label. I'm starting to remember that you have an extreme side. Well, then you remember what fun that is. <laughs> She is such a visual character. You have this wild black and white hair and this incredible makeup and these completely unique and fantastic costumes. My dog. I wanted to have an iconic cruella look, so it had real movement. And Emma Stone being Emma Stone, of course, she used it to her best advantage. Once you put those things on, you feel like Cruella de Vil, and it sort of just transports you into her world. Our costume designer, Jenny Bevan, is phenomenal, and she's created something really special. I read the script, and it was really fun and feisty. So we did all sorts of quite funky bits of clothing. The level of artistry that's gone into the creation of these costumes is enormous. This film was actually much more complex from the costume side, because not only were we having to create characters with costume, they were both fashion designers, so they both needed their whole fashion line that I knew the audience would be very critical about. It was a tall order, and she absolutely delivered. Good cut. Hello, Great, guys, check that. All right, check it again. Awesome. When we first meet Estella, she's a kid. So you're kind of seeing what her experience is like in school. <laughs> I always try and start at the beginning to see where someone comes from, because it's not about the clothes, it's about how they use them and how that then develops their story. One of the most fun things to explore with Estella slash Cruella is her creativity. She thinks outside of the box and thinks differently than a lot of the people around her and is very, very good at what she does, designing. It was a lovely basis then to build a character on that she finds these bits and puts them together eclectically. She does all sorts of things like graffiti all over the inside of her blazer, which she then wears the wrong way out and decorates it inappropriately and starts the whole punk thing. I need to remind you, we have a dress code. When she gets to the lair with the boys, she starts to borrow bits of their clothing. The costumes, like, if you're, like, wearing all this kind of stuff, you can't help but, like, start having a bit of a swag to your walk. You kind of float a bit more. So, uh, pretty glamorous, this fashion thing, then. Horace and Jasper, so amazingly cast, obviously by their sheer shapes and body language, are going to bring something. Horace, no! We tried to keep the colours, actually, of the animation, the aubergine, the green. Jasper almost always wears his hat. He's naturally a little more stylish. He just sort of that sharp, spiffy, checky thing. Horace, you needed boiler suits, and then they needed the disguises. For instance, you got him on the bus as a businessman with his umbrella open to take the offerings from Wink. A guy like me doesn't do a lot of wardrobe changes. Usually in film, people aren't that interested in that. I've done probably 16 to 20 different outfits in this film. From heist to heist, you'll get to see me kind of transform for those characters. I designed fabulous disguises. Estella, in the beginning, is absolutely obsessed with fashion. And that whole environment that bred this creativity in the punk movement, a lot of what she does, it's like making do with combinations of things and being inventive. You know, she's basically trained herself outside of the establishment. Okay. You get the sense that she would also have gone to vintage stores and Brick Lane when it was a rag market and, you know, all the places I used to go. Look around, Cinderella. If you can dream it, I can dress it. My character, Artie, owns a vintage shop called Second Time Around. He's very glam, you know, visually, but for him it's a lifestyle. He has the same philosophy as Cruella, being rebellious with how you look and how you present yourself to the world and not having to fit into the status quo. How's that look going on the streets? Mm, some abuse and insults, of course, but I like to say that normal is the cruelest insult of them all, and at least I never get that. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I didn't know much about the kind of late 70s fashion and the feeling of that sort of punk era. It was a whole new world for me. I've drop crotch pants and chain belts and creepers. I wore creepers a lot. Heavily platformed shoes that are very hard to run in, but very cool to look at. I think the amount of looks we had to do for Emma Stone is probably more again than I've ever done. I think she had 47 looks when we did the count up at the end. Cruella gets things done. And Emma Thompson as the Baroness had something like 31 or two. So, you know, we were into serious amounts. 
Jenny Bevan's costume designs are just extraordinary. Let's do it again. Every single one, I go, oh, this is my favorite. Oh, no, no, this is my favorite. I just found my signature piece. How do you like it? There are some costumes that were so beautiful I didn't want to take them off. But in the end, you have to take them off because you're wearing a corset underneath them and the corsets are fantastically uncomfortable. Did you just lie to me? And the Baroness, I think I saw very clearly. Thank you all for coming. Very sculptural, Dior-influenced, slightly old-fashioned now for these post-60s times. I always saw it in those thick taffetas. You know, they almost hold their shape, real old duchess satins, thick, beautiful silks. And I just had a sense about the colours, that it was going to be brown and gold. As most of us choose a colour and stick to it. I've done it again. Let's go make history. The Baroness is someone who wouldn't be seen dead in a pair of sweatpants. The outward show is everything. There is nothing else. You know, it's this ruthless mask of high fashion. Baroness designs stunned. She really is a genius. She's a brilliant designer. But then this other person comes along who's better and modern and hip and chic and young and everything she can't bear. That's Cruella. It was just so much fun with Corella's character that she's fully ingrained in this punk sensibility. And you get to see how that sort of evolves. And then it's like, how is Corella gonna actually disrupt the Baroness's space? Whether it's this incredible black and white ball where I then set myself on fire and turn into a red dress. <laughs> I'd like to remind you that I'm doing all of this in heels. <laughs> or the ball at the end where everyone is dressed as Cruella and we're all wearing the same dress. It was spectacular. Arriving on a motorbike, which is the first photo bomb, we actually ended up keeping it quite simple because all these things were quite fast. She'd be there, blah, 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 and gone. So you needed to make maximum impact in a fairly short space of time. <laughs> Okay, the amazing dress that engulfs the car, this is photobomb number two. I always loved juxtaposing a crisp military jacket with a flouncy skirt. We basically took that idea and exploded it. The jacket was decorated with all the stuff you would expect, eggletts, medals, you name it, but they're actual toys or watch straps. So it's like a toy cupboard on each shoulder. And then the skirt was almost like feathers in very deep red. I, I mean, I love that garbage dress. Ah, oh, the garbage trap. Well, that did take quite a long time. I don't know if they ever say it in the script, but it was her 1967 spring collection. Putting it on was just, like, mind-blowing in a 40-foot train. And because it's supposed to be rubbish, we would use newspaper. It's like things you only ever imagine and you think you would actually put on your body and carry behind you on a garbage truck. That was one of my favorites. Uh, my favorite piece was the coat at the very end of the movie in the last scene. It's just beyond stunning. And I am hoping they'll let me take it home with me, but I doubt it. <laughs> Once you've stepped onto set with the costume, you can't help but really feel like you're dropped into the skin of a, of a character. And then you look around and the attention to detail in everybody has just been immaculate. I mean, the costumes are mad important in this one. I don't know how they've done it. It's a ridiculous amount of costumes. Here we go. Every single background artist looked like a lead character. It was like that. Ah. 20 dresses come in and the wardrobe people are, you know, you're watching and you're just like, someone had to sew and make and design all of that. You just gotta sit back and be amazed at what Jenny and her team have done. The scale of this movie is bigger than a lot of the films that I'm used to, and it's really incredible to look around at these masses and masses of people decked out to the nines. It's really a very important part of creating the world of Cruella. 